Yo, what's up? I haven't done this in so long, so long. I know some people have been asking about it. Um, uh, where the Pavy Day takes been at. I haven't done it in so long. Um schedule is just busier, schedule is a little bit less busy now, so I have more time to do these things on a on a daily basis. Um, so yeah, I'm back. Shout out all of y'all that wanted that even wanted me to continue to do them. I appreciate you guys. Um, missing them and wanting me to continue to do them. So um, shout out, like I said, shout out all y'all, and um, let's get to it. So today I would just want to talk about quickly. Don't want like I don't want to make these too long. But quickly, I did talk about Joel and B and the um, season he's having. I think I tweeted the other day. Um, you know that he needs more envy love, and I think he does. I think right now, before today's game, I know Embiid is not playing today. I think he's out because of rest. But before today's game, the Sixers sit at – they are third. The Sixers are third. They're third in the Eastern Conference with a record of 30-19. and 19. A, half, a game and a half back of the first seed. They're on a four-game win streak. Um, I think the, the man needs more MVP love. Like when I look at – you know, teams and people will say, you know, Giannis was up there, KD was up there, but KD's hurt. I think people say DeMar DeRozan, but I think the Bulls. I never really was a, the biggest component of the DeMar DeRozan MVP love, not because DeMar DeRozan hasn't been balling, but because you had somebody on your team basically averaging the same exact stat line as you. I know he did hit a couple game winners. I know the Bulls have had a complete and total resurgence this season. I'm happy that they had a quick and total resurgence this season. Um, I think it's incredible for the city. Me being from Chicago, I can't wait to go back and hopefully go to a Bulls game. I just want to see what the energy is like. You know, I feel like the, the Bulls haven't had this much energy around their basketball team in a decade, really, since, since the um, D-Rose years. And I don't think those teams outside of D-Rose were as fun to watch as these, Bulls te- as these Bulls teams are. But with that being said, I still wasn't the biggest fan of the DeMar DeRose and um, MVP love. Jokic, I think Jokic is having an incredible season. Um, arguably a better season than what he was having last year. They are on like a five-game win streak, but I don't think their team will win enough games to um, warrant him being a back-to-back MVP. I think Steph, obviously, since, what, mid-December, early December, since he got the record. I mean, they still been winning basketball games when Steph wasn't looking like the Steph he was looking like early in the season when he was lighting it up and shooting has falling off a little bit. I mean, still playing good basketball. Like I said, they're still winning games. Not like um, – his shooting is 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 making them miss um, lose lose games. Obviously, Draymond's been out. Clay just returned, so they're still trying to figure those things out as well. Um, the Suns, I like the Suns. I think they're a great team. I think they might. I think they're probably the best team in the NBA as of right now. But I don't think anybody on the Suns is. Um, I don't. I don't think anybody on the Suns is as is worthy of being MVP. I don't think anybody is having a a singular incredible season enough to warrant MVP on the Suns. Um, John Morant, obviously, John's a guy that people look at saying MVP. I think John's having a great season. I wouldn't say MVP. I think he should get some votes for MVP, 100%. I think he should get some votes for MVP. What he's doing this season is, is incredible, but it's not like he's lifting the Grizzlies completely up by their bootstraps. Like I know it was the thunder, but still they did have the the largest win in NBA history without him. I think they had a 10 game win streak and he was hurt in the midst of this 10 game win streak. I mean, Jaron Jackson has been playing great this year. Desmond Bain. I don't want to say he's come out of nowhere, but he's, he's definitely elevated his game and took a step that I don't know if people saw him taking last year. Um, um, D'Anthony Melton has been um playing good. I know Dylan Brooks has been hurt, but Zaire Williams, the rookie, he's come he's come in and played like he's played like the wing that I think that the Grizzlies are still quote unquote missing the piece that's missing for them to be an actual title contender. Um, he's 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 showing signs that like he could be that for them one day as he continues to grow. Um, Tyus Jones, one of the best back backup point guards in the NBA, he's not gonna. You know, usually go out there and get you 10 assists, but he doesn't turn the ball over, which I think is huge for backup point guards. For my backup point guard, I want to know that when I put you in the game, if I push you in the game and I gave you a four-point lead, when I put my starter back in, we still have a four-point lead or it be a six-point lead. I don't want to put you in the game and then my lead go from four to down eight because you came in and couldn't run the team. Um, Giannis obviously is doing his thing, having a great season, um, but I don't think Giannis is doing something this season so above what we've seen him do in past years 
to want him winning an MVP this year as well. Like what he won, if I'm not mis- – who was the MVP? Like, Jokic won MVP last year, but he was back-to-back in two in the two years before. I don't think he's doing something so incredible this season that warrants him getting MVP again, even though he is having a great season. I know it sounds crazy to say that, like, that I'm being kind of, like, biased towards his performance. But when I look at MVP, I think about somebody who is having a, a, a otherworldly season. And right now, I think Joel Embiid is doing it. I mean, obviously, there's been so much talk about, you know, Simmons not in there. I know people have their feelings about Ben Simmons, but Ben Simmons is still one of the best. I don't personally think you can name 25 basketball players in the NBA better than Ben Simmons. So you're missing a top 25 player. You're missing a guy who is probably the best defensive guard in the um, league. You're missing him. Um, You're missing one of the better playmakers in the league. You're missing a guy who – you know, I know people talk about his shooting, but the fact that he plays the position he does, he's still a matchup nightmare, I think, for pretty much any team in the league. And you're missing that. And he's not because he's hurt or something. He just doesn't want to play because he is mad at the organization. And the organization won't trade him because they have devalued. I don't know if they devalued him so much or if Daryl Morey just is just playing hardball and hard to get and wants a trade that he's not going to get. Or maybe he knows something that I don't know, and he'll get some trade that I didn't foresee him getting. A trade that I think could be cool for them is Bradley Beal for Ben Simmons. Reason being is because of the fact, I think Bradley Beal is up for, I think his player, I think he has a player option after after this year. I can't imagine he would play on a one-year player option just because of the uncertainty of that. Um, but I don't know if if you look at what where 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 Washington started the season Bradley Beal himself is having. I don't know if you want to pay him max contract money, um, and if you don't want to do that, Benson. I think the money damn near works out evenly. Ben Simmons is the guy that you get him in your on your um team. He's there for four years. He's still what twenty. I think he's twenty five years old, something like that. So you have another young star who I still think has loads of uh potential left. Um, You know, I know people talk about that pass in the Atlanta series and everything else and the points he scored. But I've said I've said it here many times and said that I don't think that they always use him um, in the best way. Um, I don't see how you have a guy like that and you aren't OK. You know, he can't shoot, but run plays for him that don't involve him shooting the ball, like put him near the basket. So whatever. But regardless of all this, all all of the drama that they've been having, Embiid has been the one constant. He has been balling. He has been improving his game every single year. I mean, right now he's averaging 21.9, which is the most points he's ever averaged, 10.8 rebounds, which is not the most rebounds he's ever averaged, but it's still a ton of rebounds. He's averaging 4.4 assists, which is the most rebounds he's ever, which is the most assists he's he's ever averaged. And he's currently at three turnovers a game, which is his lowest. And then when you look at the Sixers, they run a, they actually use and be kind of how the Nuggets use Jokic a lot with obviously Ben Simmons not being there. They run a lot of their offense through Joel and B. If you guys look at the way he's scoring the ball, he pretty much has every shot a big man could possibly have. Like he has a midi. Um, he obviously has post moves. He's stronger than pretty much anybody. He finishes well. Um, he's good again to the line. He's taking uh, how many free throws a game? He's taking nine free throws a game like nine free throws a game. So he's he, so even if he has a bad night, even if he's shooting off, he's still coming away with 20 points probably in his sleep because of the fact 10 of them are going to come from the free throw line. He's an 81% free throw shooter. So it's not like you can foul him. He's shooting 81% this year. Now on three-pointer, he's shooting 36% from the um three-point line. 50% from three is 49. You maybe will want it a little bit higher because he's a big man. You maybe will want about, you know, 52, 53. But still, the man is having an incredible season. I mean, if you go by the splits, he's just getting better every single month. I think this season he started off a little so – he started off a little bit. I don't want to say slow, but I felt like he was working his way into the season. And now he's – I mean, if you go month by month, like let's just look at it. October. 21, 8, and 3. November, 25, and 12. December, 29, 11. January, he's played 14. And through this, well, this is the last day of January. So throughout the whole month of January, that man has averaged 34, 10, and 5. I don't think there's been a better player in the, in the I think arguably he's been the best player. Actually, I wouldn't even say arguably. I would go out on a limb and say he's been, he's, he has been the best player in the NBA this season. And I don't think that he's getting enough, personally, I don't think he's getting enough, um, MVP love. And I mean, with the way that he's playing, even if they don't trade Ben Simmons, as long as this team is healthy, they're on the court, they can continue to jail. 
Um, I still think this team can make a deep playoff run. Like, I mean, I when I when I look at who's out there, I think that the Bucks and the Heat could possibly beat them. But outside of the Bucks and the Heat, I really don't see a team that could possibly beat them. I mean, even a team like Brooklyn. Brooklyn to me is still a concept, right? And the issue with Brooklyn is I think they played okay, so Russ. AD and Braun somehow this season. I don't know how. I don't remember these games, but they somehow played 13 games together. The Brooklyn Nets, as a total in the past two years, with Harden, Kyrie, and Kevin Durant, have played 13 games together. This is not the halfway point of the season. We are past the halfway point of the season. The Brooklyn Nets have played 49 games. That means if my math serves me correctly, they have 33 games left. Kevin Durant is hurt right now. Kyrie Irving is a part-time player. And James Harden has two injuries that he's nursing right now. And Joe Harris is hurt. I keep forgetting Joe Harris is part of the team. And Joe Harris hurt, who is another integral part to what they want to do. So I don't know how they can all get back and get chemistry. And you have a second-year coach. It's not like you got Phil Jackson on the sidelines. No slight to Steve Nash. I think the man knows what he's doing. But in reality, he's a second-year coach. He don't have much experience with this. Simple things like rotations and lineups are something that he may not have much experience with to this point in time. So when I look at the East, every team has questions. The Bulls, right? Okay, Lonzo hurt. Caruso fractured his wrist. Patrick Williams is out. Also, Vucevic and Embiid, that's 40 and 20 every night. If, if I'm in a series, that's 40 and 20 probably every night. If if not 40 and 20, more realistic, that's 35 and 15 every night. I feel very confident in, in, in Joel and B being far and away the best player on the court in that series. Um, I think a team like Cleveland could give them some issues. I don't think Cleveland would win. I think like but 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 I think they could they could give them some issues. And when I look at everybody else, I don't really see a team outside of Miami and the Bucks who can beat them. Um, so they could still make a huge deep playoff run, even if they don't trade Ben Simmons. And if they do trade Ben Simmons, as long as they get the right pieces back, uh, I don't think they need much, you know, especially with the way Embiid is playing, as long as he stays healthy. I mean, Tobias, I think he's, I don't want to say he's overpaid because he got what the market said he should get when he got the money, but he's still a good player. I think he's playing probably one spot too far up. Tybo is a really good defender. Um, especially with Embiid behind, especially with the you know, obviously, I don't think Embiid is Hakeem defensively, but he's definitely not no slouch. Um, defensively, he's definitely a positive there when it comes to the defensive side of the basketball. You have Tybo, you have Tyrese Maxey, who's the guy who's been continuing to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow this year. Um, you have Niang off the bench, you have uh, Court Marx, um, off the bench, you have Seth Curry, who's also one of the best shooters in the league. So, they don't need much to me to be able to make an extreme, extreme deep run, and even if they don't get much or they don't get anything, I still think they can make a solid run. Also, the bio market is coming up. You never know. Philly might get somebody. So all in all, man, I just want people to put more respect on, on Joel Embiid's name and what he's doing this season. I think he's very worthy um, of the MVP award. I mean, I even think last year before he went down with the knee hyperextension, I think in many people's minds, he was MVP of the league last year. So this year with what he's been doing, um, um, so far in January, but also so far over the course of this season. If I'm not mistaken, he's second in scoring right now. He might be first in scoring. If I actually look, Embiid is – he is – he's second in points per game, but that's because KD is at 29.2, Embiid is at 29.1. But in my book, he's first because he's been out there – I don't want to say every night, but he's been out there a lot of the nights. He's played 38 games this season – um, Kevin Durant has played 36 games this season. Um, and Embiid has missed some time because of COVID, obviously. So, um, yeah, man, I just think Joel Embiid so far, like I said, is the MVP. And I want some people to put more respect on his name. And I don't feel like he's in the conversation the way that he needs to be in the conversation. So, as I said, um, I'm gonna try to consistently bring these to you more consistent. Um, my schedule looks like it's freed up a little bit. So, um, hopefully, I can bring these to you daily. Um, if not daily, at least like more times a week than what I was giving them to you. So, um, yeah, man, it's been Pavage Daily Takes. Follow me on – follow follow. first of all, follow this page, Pavage Daily Takes, and then follow me on Twitter at Pavy World. Follow Hoops and Brews. Um, I have new music coming out. Um, so look out for all of that, man. Look out for all of that. The Bachelor coming soon. Go check out Soft Lips. It's out right now. Um, I think it's over what? like 400,000 plays on all platforms. 
So yeah, make sure y'all go check that out, man. And until next time. Every time they see me, they say that's a move. That's a move. Every time they see you, they say that's a move. That's a move. Every time they see us, they say that's a move. 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 Yeah. Tell me I can sign me no she prime. That's a move. I just closed on the crib. That's a move. She sent a text that said she. That's a move. Yeah. That's a move. Yeah. That's a move. Yeah. Terry.